What are we praying for? What are we hoping for? And then we need to ask ourselves, what can we do to turn that into reality? Backstory, Fagenbaum was a star football player at Georgetown University. He then tackled medical school and in his third year was diagnosed with Castleman disease, a cross between cancer and an autoimmune, autoimmune disorder. There was no treatment for the rare disease, so Fagenbaum found one himself. After testing his own blood and lymph nodes for a year, he finally found a breakthrough by repurposing a drug already on the market. Now, as the coronavirus pandemic spreads across the globe, the 35-year-old doctor, husband, and father is assembling a team of volunteers to identify and repurpose a drug to treat COVID-19. And joining us now is Dr. David Fagenbaum, assistant professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania and co-founder and director of the Castleman Disease Collaborative Network. He is also the author of the book, Chasing My Cure, A Doctor's Race to Turn Hope into Action, detailing his experience. Dr. Uh, Fagenbaum, thank you so much for being with us. You were able to use crowdsourcing to find and fund a cure for your disease. Uh, can you tell us about that methodology and do you think it might work now fighting the coronavirus? That's exactly right. Thank you so much for having me on today. Basically, we tried to get together the world's experts, physicians, researchers, patients to crowdsource the right ideas for what research needed to be done. And then once we did the research, we looked to try to find all of the drugs that already exist that could potentially be repurposed against Castleman disease, the disease that I'm battling. We're now trying to repeat the similar approach here against COVID-19. And importantly, as you mentioned, we've assembled a team that's going through the thousands of papers that have already been written about, as you mentioned earlier, over 100 drugs that have been tried against COVID-19, and we're really excited to see that some of these drugs seem to be working. Yeah, you see, Dr. Fagenbaum, you have a theory that COVID-19 is producing a response much like Castleman's disease in that it produces a cytokine storm or a runaway immune system response. Tell us what you mean by that. Sure, a cytokine storm occurs when your immune system becomes hyperactivated, and it's so activated that it actually causes damage to your vital organs, the production of these cytokines. We see a similar thing in Castleman disease. That's what gets patients like me so sick. I had my last rites read to me because of the cytokine storm that I experienced and went on to nearly die four more times. We're seeing when we look in the blood of patients with COVID-19, we see a very, very similar makeup from their immune cells and also the cytokines that are being produced, which is leading us to actually try a number of Castleman disease treatments against COVID-19 patients. And some of the most promising drugs were initially developed for Castleman disease. Do you think that cytokine storm is also responsible that we're seeing uh, more fatalities among men? It's a really good question. We're not sure what exactly the reason that there is this difference between men and women, but we do know that we, we talk often about the proportion of patients who die from the virus, but actually most patients that die from COVID-19 are not dying from the virus. They're actually dying from the response that their immune system is having to the virus. It's actually this hyperactive response. And so if we can figure out ways to calm down the immune system, but don't calm it down too much because you don't want to have too weak of an immune system, but to appropriately calm it down, then we can be much more effective with therapy. So your organization has researched thousands of papers and created a database from over 10,000 patients. So this next question may, might be a little bit unfair, but are there any specific drugs, Dr. Fagenbaum, you um, have already narrowed down as the most promising? Uh, it, you're right, it is an unfair question because unfortunately there isn't enough data, but, but this is where we are. We're in a situation where there isn't enough data, so it actually maybe it is a fair question. We need to be asking these sort of questions. And as of right now, we've seen almost 150 different drugs have been given to patients with COVID-19. And thankfully, there are a few of them. Um, there are a few that have made the headlines that, that are certainly on the short list. But one drug in particular that I'm, that I'm very um, optimistic about is a drug called tocilizumab and another drug called seltuximab. They both target a particular cytokine called interleukin-6, and they seem to be showing efficacy. But as we all know from our experience with COVID-19, many patients get better with COVID-19 without any treatment at all. So it's really important to do these randomized controlled trials. You can say people who got the drug had this response and people who didn't get the drug got this response. So hopefully over the next few weeks, we're gonna start learning more and more about the responses these patients are having.
Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. David Fagenbaum, thank you so much. Very interesting. Have a great weekend. And Thanks we'll so much for having me.